we are about to find out what insomnia is and what it is not. In the studio today, we have our first guest, Dr. Chike Opara. He's the co-founder of Hello Care. Good morning. Good morning. And we have Dr. Clark Azubike, right? Yes. Oh, yes. I didn't murder your name. Good morning. <laughs> He's a public health analyst, right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having us. Oh, yes. It's a pleasure. <laughs> okay, and like you've said, you know, when in, I hear insomnia, I'm also, I'm always like, okay, just lack of sleep, inability yes. to sleep. Yeah. But I'm sure there is more to it, not just inability to sleep. So I'll be asking Dr. Clark, what is insomnia? Okay, uh, insomnia basically means um, inability to either sustain sleep or um, when you wake up, you're not able to get back to sleep as you expect. That's basically what it means. And then we'll not get into the various classifications and definitions as we go on. So it's either you're not able to fall asleep on time or you're not able to stay asleep. When you've woken up. When you've woken so up. It's inability to initiate sleep in the first place. So you've got the individual goes home and at a certain point in time, he wants to sleep, but he's not able to initiate the sleep. Or if the individual sleeps, but he wakes up at some point in the night and then is not able to continue, continue the sleep. So he's not able to initiate or maintain sleep. Okay, what of um, a case where um, the person sleeps during the day and then is, finds it difficult to sleep at night, probably because you've slept for a long time during the day? Is that also insomnia? How do I do? Yes, that's also ins insomnia as well. So the way our body is wired is in such a way that at wow. night, we are supposed to be sleeping and during the day we are supposed to be wide awake but when there's some distortion with that then that's where you have insomnia and why that is problematic is because the individual is finding it as a source of concern to him so if it's not a concern maybe we won't, we won't think so much about it okay so dr shike what if i can sleep i can fall asleep when i want to or mm -hmm. i can decide to sleep for as long as i want to However, I'm sort of sensitive, say any little noise or distraction in the environment, I tend to wake up and maybe I might find it harder going back to sleep. Is that also a form of yes. insomnia? That's also a type of insomnia and like mm -hmm. you said, it's the, it's the difficulty in maintaining sleep. Mm -hmm. So they can initiate sleep in that situation, but they cannot maintain the sleep. Maintain so it. any little thing, they wake up and they can't go back to sleep. Oh, yeah, so that means a lot of us are suffering from that. I'm yeah. telling you. So what are the types? Okay, so there are basically two types of insomnia, depending on how you choose to look at it. Okay. It could be acute, it could be chronic. Acute in that it occurs from a few nights to a few weeks. And if it goes beyond a few weeks, that's chronic Ooh. insomnia. Chronic and acute. So it's just a function of uh, time. 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 And there's also another way to classify insomnia. It could be a primary or secondary. Okay. Primary in that there is no underlying cause. And it's secondary when you can say, okay, this person has this condition and that's why he has insomnia. Mm -hmm. You understand? When it's a symptom of another condition. Okay. Yeah. That's comorbid or something like that. Yeah. Secondary comorbid. insomnia. Uh -huh. So is there, I'm, I'm thinking, let's say merging, is there a possibility that it could be a virgin of secondary type with the chronic? Like you, uh, the very uh, serious type. There are actually two dis d distinct ways to um, group them. So okay. some, sometimes we call them intercalate, yes. Oh, that's going to be bad. So what are the causes? Um, because of how we live our lives now, most of us, like you said, tend to have insomnia. Doctors, hmm. people that were working the media because we walk around the clock. So, so even doctors one very know. common <laughs> cause is lifestyle. Organization, lifestyle. Those two things um, predispose people to insomnia. Another common cause again is substance use. Oh, yes. okay. So, and, 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 and this works in two ways. Okay. One, some substances would prevent you from falling asleep like coffee. And most of us are guilty of it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> look, that is not going to stop me from this. Thank you. So, so uh, you, you can take coffee in the morning. Okay. It's good. It helps, it helps your mind be sharp. But in the evenings, towards um, night time, when you, when you should be asleep, stay away from it. So you don't, have, have, um, you, you don't find it hard to sleep. And then another thing could be use of alcohol. Now, this is how it works. 
Alcohol normally makes you want to sleep. Sleep, yes. It does. Mm -hmm. So when you keep using alcohol to fall asleep, which is what people do often, after a while, you can't sleep without it. Oh. Yeah. Then it becomes more like an addiction. Yeah. So you cannot now sleep without alcohol. And then with time, you need to keep taking more and more alcohol to fall asleep. And after a while, alcohol will not help you sleep again. Yeah. So you probably so, need something stronger. Stronger. Yeah. That's how it works. So aside, Dr. Clark, aside lifestyle, aside mm -hmm. substance abuse, aside, aside the other word that you mentioned, is there any other possible trigger of insomnia? Um, there are other causes of uh, insomnia, and he has really highlighted the common causes. Um, the other causes of insomnia could include psychological issues that the individual is dealing with mm -hmm. at the time. So people that, uh, as, that just um, experienced a tragic situation mm -hmm. might um, experience insomnia. So people that are depressed, mm -hmm. and people that have some other anxiety. psychiatric disorder like anxiety, like manic, um, manic attack, manic disorders, mood disorders, generally these individuals tend not to sleep. Um, then apart from the um, psychological aspect, we know that there are some medical conditions that can um, predispose people to not um, sleeping, but these are just the, on the fewer spectrum. Okay. But um, he mentioned, which is very important to know, that uh, when he was classifying insomnia, that most of the causes of insomnia is not clearly known, it's mm -hmm. not clearly understood. So what, what we do typically um, when we are treating the patient is just to exclude the common causes, we we'll ask you if your profession entails that you stay up at night, stay, through the, um, stay up at night and distort your normal body reading. And then when we've excluded that, we try to exclude if there's been a psychological problem or a, a recent experience that's maybe affected your state of mind. When we rule those out, we then um, assume that it's just not a clear cause and then you think forward from there. You know, even though because you mentioned it now, I won't know that I, you said it, most people, <laughs> most of us are even suffering well, from insomnia that. and we do not know. So what are the symptoms aside lack of sleep? So it's very important, before I go forward to just talk about symptoms, I just want to mention that um, there's a way sleep is structured normally, biologically, and so we have like a deep sleep and then a light sleep. And so um, at night, what you expect to have is a deep sleep, so that your body is rested, your mind is rested, and then you're able to, f when you wake up in the morning, your body is re rejuvenated, so to speak, for your daily activity. Um, mm -hmm. in people that are in insomniac, Obviously, from the definition, they're not able to sleep. So um, they might not be able to um, get like the required number of hours that they need to sleep. And so it's very important, I should mention at this point, that um, there is really no specific duration of time that is um, classified as adequate for adults. We know that for kids, for babies, for babies, newborn, they typically recommend 12 to 18 hours of sleep every day for um, newborn and babies. And infants. For children, they recommend 12 hours. As you get older, that number begins to reduce, obviously, because you have to uh, live your life. Um, but when you are an adult, a full adult, there is no um, recommended hours of sleep. However, we, they typically recommend that people try to get at least five to six hours of sleep every Wait, night. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you just say five to six hours? Because all my life I've believed eight hours. Eight, nine. Mine is even nine. <laughs> okay. But that's like the average recommendation. Of course, you have to do all that. And so just assume that at least get five to six hours of sleep. But some people are able to function optimally at three hours of sleep. Every Would that have like a long-term implication? Mm -hmm. Well, for such people, they're able to cope. That's what they need to rejuvenate their body and their mind. Okay. You understand? So that's not necessarily problematic for them. And that's why insomnia to some extent is a personal like problem in terms of the person complains to you. It's, it's not like you're going to look at somebody and say, oh, you're sleeping three hours a day or four hours a day. You're not getting enough to be an insomniac. You understand? And so, so the symptoms include the person is not sleeping or the person sleeps and then wakes up and is not able to get back to sleep as easily as he um, was able to initially. And then there's excessive daytime um, sleepiness. Okay. So that's another sign of insomnia. You're not sleeping at night, but during the day you're really, really feeling excessively sleepy. And then um, another common complaint that uh, insomniacs have is that they wake up in the morning and they don't feel rested, they don't feel rejuvenated. Yeah. So when you have that feeling consistently, then it's a sign that you're probably having a sleep um, Okay. Problem. What about eye bags? What about eye bags? 
I it bags. also a sign of well, you know, <laughs> a symptom. Well, well <laughs> eye, bags, eye bags necessarily show that you've not had enough sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're an insomnia. Remember that we said, he said earlier that to be called an insomnia or to be diagnosed with insomnia, you have to have it within a duration of time. So if, for whatever reason, maybe you had, I had to walk over the night as a doctor and then I just got like two hours of sleep and I woke up and maybe I have some eye bags. Doesn't necessarily mean that I'm an insomnia. It just means that I didn't get enough sleep that night. Okay. I still want to clarify, although this time I'm going to be hearing your opinion. He said maybe three hours necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily eight hours. And I want to hear your opinion, Dr. Chiki. Out of the 24 hours, are you saying, do you also think that maybe three hours or four hours, depending on the individual body mm. system, can work? I don't. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> because I'm I about don't. to take that off. Okay, so how many hours do you think? Because at least someone is watching and wants yeah, to know. For, exactly. for adults, I, um, it's typically recommended that we sleep for six to eight hours. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and, and it, because of what sleep does for the body, sleep is when the body actually repairs itself and builds itself. Mm. So. Um, and, and a few other things that happen when we sleep, like um, it helps build our, our immune system, our hormones are working, um, it helps to combat short-term memory to long-term long -term memory. memory. So all, all these things happen when we sleep, which is why babies tend to sleep for a long time, 18 hours, you know, in a day. what they're doing in their life, <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> and, and, and it's because at that young age, their brains are just forming, you know, okay. and, and it's, it's the first time they're experiencing life outside the, outside the well, that's one, so, you know, and there's, there's so much happening. And it has been shown that babies that don't sleep, you know, well, when they are young, when they are little, tend to be, tend to have a kind of irritable personality as they get older. They tend to what? They tend to be more irritable. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they do. As adults. So, so, so you yeah. can see how important sleep is for them. And then the, the, the symptoms of not sleeping well, I mean, obviously, one, you're, you're not, I mean, it's right. the symptom of insomnia. One, you're not sleeping well. Sleeping well. Yeah. And two, they tend to, people tend to be more forgetful. Huh? Oh. Yes. When you, okay. it's, it's, it's one well. of the most common symptoms you find in who's not sleeping well. Okay. Two, they get angry easily. Oh, yeah. we know that. <laughs> okay. They do. They do. Cranky. They do. Irritable. Yeah. Irritable, yeah. Mm. Usually. And um, they tend to fall sick more often because oh. it depletes the immune system. system. So like all these things. Like immune suppressant or something? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't use the term, but okay. yeah, something like that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so these are the, 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 the effects of not sleeping well. Yeah. And yes, I was, I was also going to talk about, oh, I think I, I would come back to it. Okay. Okay. Well, we, have a, we have a question on uh, social media apart from that, um, from Mustafa Jalo, and he's saying that does sleeping too much cause any health risk? <laughs> Let me ask you, Dr. Clark. <laughs> well, the problem with, so there's, a, there's actually a problem of sleeping too much. It's actually a, a medical slap um, or a psychiatric problem where somebody sleeps too, too much. much. Yeah. So it's problematic in itself, but why are, like I'm going to answer that question in this way. We don't tend, like I said, we don't tend to prescribe to people the amount of, we recommend, but we don't emphasize that people have to sleep. So it just depends on what you're able to maintain until you complain that, oh, um, doctor, I'm sleeping too much, or doctor, I'm sleeping too little. That's when we begin to get concerned. But we don't generally recommend anything um, to people. So sleeping too much can itself be problematic. Um, okay. One of the things that happen when an individual sleeps too much, as it were, a person is not able to be alert, is not able to function at his work, is not able to get done with his day-to-day -day activity. Um, the other person is not be, also able to be attentive, to be able okay. to engage. Um, the okay. individual also gains weight because we know that, like he said, when you're sleeping, you're resting, your body's rejuvenating and building back its um, lost um, tissue. So the person is going to add some weight, and that can be problematic okay. anyway. So sleeping too much is not. I'm not going to go out of my way to say in that individual is a problem until we're able to obviously assess the person and confirm that he has a real medical need. How do you actually treat insomnia? Exactly. So um, the treatment for insomnia obviously starts from when you interact with the individual. You have to find out the cause. It still comes down to finding out the cause okay. because insomnia most of the time reflects a broader issue that is ongoing. So the first step is identifying the cause. 
and then when you identify, you're able to identify the course, which we do many of the times, um, you can then trade that course. So the first step is um, lifestyle modification. Okay. And so in lifestyle modification, the tool, the, what, what, what we have in our toolkit is what we call the sleep hygiene. Mm. And this sleep hygiene uh, are the group of practices that we recommend to patients. So typically, when you, when you notice, when an individual notices that he's not sleeping, we advise you to go and see your your physician or your doctor and then while you're interacting with him some of the things he will tell you will include tell you um, have a designated room for sleeping um, have a designated time for sleeping and then uh, have a bed um, sleep in a preferably dark place there's, oh. a, there's a yeah it help, helps the quality of sleep when you sleep in a dark place remember that our body is wired to sleep when the weather is darker that's the night. And then there's a practice that we have in this our young generation, millennial generation. We tend to um, press our phone into the night <laughs> or take your laptop or your movie That's to your, true. take your walk to your bed. Mm. So we tell you don't, you shouldn't do those kind of things. And you should only go to bed when you feel like you're ready to sleep. And then avoid um, uh, heavy meals like three hours before you before go to sleep. Um, he mentioned about coffee and tea and other stimulants and alcohol. Okay, um, significantly bedtime. cut, yeah, cut back, okay. um, cut those before bedtime. And then when you've done all those, when you're, when you're in bed, try to just lie down, try to stay still, and have a regulated pattern for sleeping. So you have to try that out for a while and try to build that habit and see how it works out. And then uh, if there appears to be no improvement, then there are, you are also recommend to see a physician who's going to recommend um, mm. possibly Thank recommend you. some medication. You know, I really hope that you doctors also take this treatment of prevention. <laughs> yes, because I hope because you take what you, you, you <laughs> practice. Or I wonder practice how you do it. I really wonder how you do it. Well, yeah. Okay, I was actually going to talk, talk about this earlier, how our okay. bodies work and how okay. our lifestyle is beginning to affect our, our sleep. So, you, you, you know how we have day and night mm. and it's hot during the day and it gets cooler in the evening. Mm. Uh, our bodies are designed to sleep according to that pattern. Yeah. So as the sun begins to go down, it gets cooler. Cool. Your body thinks, oh, I should sleep. That's how it's supposed to be naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because of urbanization, uh, jobs, mm, and all that, things have changed. Okay. So when people have find it difficult to sleep, like he mentioned, we now ask them to do sleep hygiene. Yeah. Sleep hygiene is basically doing I, oh, what I, I mentioned earlier. So, okay. um, when the sun begins to go down, it's okay. evening. You should prepare yourself to go to, to sleep. Mm -hmm. Listen to your body. Yes. Oh, thank you. Doctor, so, 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 some people can too. function with, with all that um, <laughs> chaos. They can function with their, with, with, with their world upside down, you know, okay. so to speak. But most other people cannot, and so they have to do sleep sleep hygiene. hygiene. Mm -hmm. So it means in the evening time, prepare to go to sleep, avoid anything that emits light mm, okay. from the box So it's safe to room, say we should put up the lights when we're about phones, to your phones, laptops, all of them, avoid them. No TV in your room, no okay. laptop. Don't walk in, in the place where you sleep. Right. So the, the thing that we do, that we, we, we take our walk to our bedroom, avoid it. All right. So, so you should say, I'm going here to sleep. Okay. Yeah. okay. I know there's yeah. so much to yeah. say and to talk about mm -hmm. on this topic, but we need to wrap up this segment, yeah. go on a short break, and move over to our second interview segment. Yes, thank, thank you, you so very much for coming, Dr. Kaka Thank you. And Dr. Chike Okwara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do you like the video you just watched? Then you should click on the like button and move over to click on the subscribe button. Also, you should click on the bell to get notified anytime we drop amazing episodes of Tea or Coffee for you. Adios!